So you're working on your thesis, hunkering down, and you hit that wall. You know, the one with all the data you've collected. It can feel pretty overwhelming, right? Like, where do I even begin? Exactly. I mean, you stare at those spreadsheets and wonder how to make sense of it all. And that's where we come in, right? StateExpert.pro. It's here to be your guide to help you navigate the sometimes very confusing world of statistics, yeah. especially when it comes to tackling something as important as your thesis. And it can be intimidating. I mean, SPSS, R, Python, hmm. not exactly household names for everyone. Not at all. But StatExpert.pro is designed to make them feel less like scary monsters and more like, well, maybe friendly helpers. I like that. Friendly helpers in the statistical wilderness. Mm. That's a great way to think about it. And it's not just about crunching numbers, is it? It's about choosing the right tools for the job. Absolutely. Yeah. It all starts with a solid methodology. It's like your research blueprint, making mm -hmm. sure you're building on solid ground. And that's super important for applied research like a thesis. Right, because with a thesis, you're not just exploring theories. You're trying to solve a real world problem. Exactly. You have a specific goal in mind. Now, a lot of folks might overlook this, but the underlying theory is crucial. Theory, like the big picture stuff. Exactly. Think of it as the architect's vision for a building. It's the why behind your research. Theory helps you explain those patterns you see in your data. It gives your findings meaning. Okay, so theory is the story, and methodology is how you tell that story in a way that makes sense, right? Exactly. Now, for this deep dive, we'll be focusing on quantitative research because that's where those statistical tests really come in. Right, because quantitative research is all about finding patterns and relationships in those mountains of data. And that's where students often hit a snag. It can be tough to figure out which statistical test to use. Like, do I need a t-test or an ANOVA? What about a chi square? It's a real head scratcher. And picking the wrong test can lead to, well, let's just say, inaccurate conclusions which is definitely not what you want in your thesis. And that's where StatExpert.pro steps in to guide you. It helps you select the right test based on your research question and the type of data you have, whether it's numbers, categories, or whatever else you're working with. So it takes the guesswork out of that crucial first step. Absolutely. It also helps you understand what those results mean because that's often the trickiest part. Right, because it's one thing to get a bunch of numbers and graphs, but what do they actually tell you about your research question? It's like deciphering a secret code and different software packages like SPSS or R, they all have their own quirks. Oh, I remember struggling with those in grad school. But StatExpert.pro can help you decode those outputs no matter which software you're using. So it acts as a translator, making those results much easier to understand. Exactly. Now let's talk about some of those statistical tests. Shall we start with univariate analysis? It's like taking a look at one variable at a time. Univariate analysis, yeah. I vaguely remember that term from stats class. A good example is the binomial test. Imagine you're looking at the proportion of students in your sample who prefer, let's say, online classes. You want to compare that to a known national average. Right, like are the students at my university unique in their preference for online classes? Or are they just reflecting a broader trend? The binomial test helps you answer that question. Okay, so it's like comparing your little slice of the pie to the whole pie. Precisely. And then there's the one sample t-test, which is super useful when you want to compare the average of a variable in your sample to a known population mean. Okay, like if I want to see if students at my university score higher on a certain standardized test compared to the national average, the t-test can tell me if that difference is statistically significant. Exactly. It helps you figure out if what you're seeing in your sample is just random chance or something more meaningful. Got it. So those are for single variables. Mm -hmm. But what if we want to look at how two variables relate to each other? That's where bivariate analysis comes in. And there are lots of tests to choose from depending on what kind of variables you're dealing with, like the independent samples t-test. Okay, I remember that one. It's perfect for comparing two groups on a numeric variable. Like, do male and female students differ in their levels of, say, test anxiety? Exactly. Or if you want to compare anxiety levels across different majors, that's where the ANOVA comes in handy. So the ANOVA is like a souped-up t-test, mm -hmm. able to handle comparisons between three or more groups. Exactly. But what if we're not looking at numbers, but categories? Like, is there a relationship between your major and, say, your preferred learning style? Ah, that's where the chi-square test comes in, right? You got it. The chi-square test is all about exploring relationships between categorical variables. Okay, and then there's correlation, which I remember is that thing that tells you how strongly two variables are related, like hours of sleep 
and exam performance. Exactly. The correlation coefficient gives you a number that summarizes the strength and direction of the relationship. Are they moving in the same direction, opposite directions, or is there no relationship at all? It's like seeing if those variables are dancing partners or just awkward strangers at a party. A great analogy. And then you have those more powerful techniques for when you're dealing with multiple variables at once, like multiple regression. Oh, yeah, that one was always a bit intimidating. But it's super helpful when you want to predict an outcome based on multiple factors. Exactly. Like, can we predict a student's success in their first year of college based on their high school GPA, standardized test scores, and maybe even some personality traits? So it's like creating a recipe for success but with statistics instead of ingredients. That's one way to put it. And then there's factor analysis, which helps you make sense of a whole bunch of variables by identifying underlying themes or factors. Like that example with the study habit survey. Instead of looking at each question separately, factor analysis could reveal broader themes like time management or organization. Exactly. It's like decluttering your research, finding the underlying order in what might seem like a chaotic mess of data. Okay, so we've got all these amazing tools at our disposal, but I imagine it can still be overwhelming for students, right? Knowing where to even begin. It can be. That's where StatExpert.pro comes in. It's designed to be user-friendly, to guide you through the process, to help you make sense of those choices and feel confident in your analysis. It's like having a statistical advisor right there in your pocket, ready to answer your questions and make sure you're not heading down a statistical dead end. And it's not just about getting the numbers right. It's about understanding what those numbers mean in the context of your research. Let's go back to that binomial test for a second. Okay, remember that example where we were comparing the proportion of students who prefer online classes? Yeah, trying to see if my university was an outlier or just following the national trend. Exactly. So let's say your sample had 70% preferring online, but nationally it's only 55%. Okay, a decent difference. Right. Binomial test takes those numbers and gives you this thing called a p-value. The p-value, ah, yes, the yeah. infamous p-value. It tells me if that difference, that 15%, is actually statistically significant, right? Like, is it a real thing yeah. or just random noise? You got it. If the p-value is less than 0 0.05, you know, our kind of magic threshold. Right, 0 0.05. We can then say, hmm, maybe there's something interesting going on here. It means that difference is probably not just due to chance. So low p-value, green light to keep digging. Exactly. It doesn't prove anything for sure, but it's definitely a clue. Now let's jump to the one sample test. Okay, imagine you're looking at student engagement and your university has an average score of 4.2 out of 5 on some engagement survey. Not too shabby. But how do we know if that's good or bad? I mean, how does it compare to other universities? That's where the two test comes in, right? Exactly. Let's say you find a national study with an average score of 3.8. Okay, lore. The t-test steps in and compares your sample's average, 4.2, to that known population mean of 3.8. And again, it all boils down to that p-value. So low p-value, we're doing something right, our students are more engaged, maybe time to brag a little. Now hold on a second. Statistical significance is great, but we also need to think about what's called practical significance. Like, is a 0.4 difference on that engagement scale even meaningful? Ah, good point. A tiny difference could be statistically significant, but not really matter in the real world. Exactly. Always think about what those numbers actually mean in the context of your research. Okay, moving on to bivariate analysis. This is where things get really interesting. We're looking at the relationship between two variables. Like with those t-tests and ANOVAs we talked about earlier, those are all about comparing groups. Exactly. Let's say you're using an independent samples t-test to compare stress levels between students in online classes versus traditional face-to-face -face classes. Okay, sounds relevant these days. And you find a statistically significant difference with online students reporting higher stress levels. Interesting. But does that automatically mean online classes are just inherently more stressful? Not so fast. It could be other factors at play, right? Maybe online students are more likely to be working full-time jobs or juggling family responsibilities. Okay, so more to the story than just the format of the classes. Precisely. It's all about interpretation, digging deeper to understand the nuances. Like a detective piecing together clues. Exactly. And don't forget about ANOVIAs for when you have more than two groups you want to compare. Like, say you're looking at study habits across different majors, science, humanities, and arts. Ah, so the NOV tells me if there's any difference in study time between those majors. Right, but it doesn't tell you which specific majors are different. For that, you'd need some additional tests, post hoc tests, they're called. 
Okay, so another layer of analysis. But let's switch gears for a minute. What about when we're dealing with categories instead of numbers? Like, is there a link between someone's major and their preferred learning style? That's where the chi-square test comes in handy. Remember that example? Yeah, I'm curious. Like, do science majors prefer hands-on learning while humanities majors are more into lectures and reading? Right. So let's say your chi-square test reveals a statistically significant relationship. Meaning? It means the way learning styles are spread out across the different majors isn't random. There's some kind of pattern there. Maybe you find that, indeed, science majors tend towards visual learning, while humanities majors lean more towards auditory learning. Wow, that's really interesting. And it could have implications for how we teach, right? Like tailoring teaching methods to different majors. Exactly. Now let's talk about correlation. This one's all about figuring out how two numeric variables move together. Imagine you're studying procrastination and stress levels. Okay, I can already guess where this is going. More procrastination, more stress. Probably. The correlation coefficient would tell us just how strong that relationship is and whether it's positive, meaning they both go up together, or negative, meaning one goes up as the other goes down. Remember, correlation doesn't automatically mean causation. Exactly. Just because two things are related doesn't mean one causes the other. There could be a third variable working in the background, messing things up. Right, that hidden factor that's actually driving both. Okay, what about those more advanced techniques? Multiple regression. Ah, multiple regression. Our statistical superhero capable of handling multiple variables all at once. Wait, give me an example. Imagine you're trying to predict student success in that crucial first year of college. You could look at things like high school GPA, SAT scores, maybe even personality traits like conscientiousness. So many factors. So regression analysis would tell you which of those variables are the strongest predictors of success. Like, does a high GPA really matter, or is it more about personality? Exactly. And then there's factor analysis, which is like a detective for your data. It yeah. helps you uncover those hidden structures and make sense of a whole bunch of variables. Right. Like that study habit survey we talked about, factor analysis, can find those underlying themes like time management or organization, even when the questions seem unrelated. Exactly. It helps you see the forest for the trees, so to speak, to make sense of complex data sets. But, you know, even with all these fantastic tools, it's easy to feel overwhelmed. I can imagine. So many choices. Where do you even start? That's exactly where StatExpert.pro can be such a game changer. It guides you, makes things user-friendly, helps you choose the right tests, and then, most importantly, understand what those results actually mean. So it's not just a software program, it's like a statistical partner in crime. Exactly. It's there to support you every step of the way to help you unlock the power of your data. We've covered a lot of ground here. T-tests, NOVAs, cheese squares, correlations, regressions. It's a whole statistical toolbox. It is, and it's amazing what you can uncover with the right tools. But I can see how it might feel a little overwhelming, especially when you're in the thick of your thesis, deadlines looming. Right, and that's where StateExpert.pro really comes into its own. It's not just about knowing the formulas or which buttons to press. It's about making those smart choices along the way, making sure your analysis is solid. And that you're not getting lost in the weeds. Because it's easy to do, right, with all the options, the software, the terminology. It's like you need a guide, someone to point you in the right direction. That's exactly what StateExpert.pro does, isn't it? It is. Whether you're working with SPSS, R, Python, whatever it might be, StateExpert.pro helps you navigate those programs, understand the outputs, make sure you're on the right track, and avoid those common statistical traps that can really throw a wrench in your analysis. It's like having a statistical guardian angel watching over your shoulder and whispering, hey, maybe try this test instead. I like that. And you know, it's not just the software itself. StateExpert.pro has that ebook, Introduction to Methodology and Statistics. That's a real gem, I have to say. Yeah, it's almost like a companion guide to the whole research process, right? From defining your question to actually interpreting those results. It is. It walks you through all the essential steps in a way that's clear and easy to grasp. So even if you're not a stats whiz, you can still feel confident in your analysis. So with StateExpert.pro and the ebook, you're well equipped for that statistical adventure. But the real excitement comes when you start applying those skills to your own research. Right. Absolutely. That's when you start seeing those patterns emerge, those relationships unfold, and the story your data is trying to tell. It's like those aha moments when you suddenly see the bigger picture. 
the puzzle pieces all fall into place. And those insights, those discoveries, they can be game changers. It's about pushing the boundaries of knowledge, making a real contribution to your field. So to our listeners out there, those of you tackling your thesis, those data mountains might seem daunting. But remember, you've got this. StateExpert.pro is here to help you every step of the way. Embrace the challenge, stay curious, and let those findings lead you to those amazing discoveries that are waiting to be uncovered. Because who knows what groundbreaking insights your research might reveal. And on that note, we'll wrap up this deep dive. But remember, this is just the beginning of your statistical journey. Keep exploring, keep asking questions, and most importantly, keep those p-values low.